All right, so 60 Minutes recently did a pretty interesting investigation into the depths of the waste, fraud, and abuse within the US military, which is obviously something that I talk about a lot on this channel because corporate media, for the most part, basically doesn't. They kind of just like bake this into the status quo that it's normal that the Pentagon is just a nearly trillion dollar per year financial black hole. So we got a little bit of a uh, refreshing piece here from corporate media. So they say from 60 Minutes on this CBS News article. They say, weapons contractors hitting Department of Defense with inflated prices for planes, submarines, and missiles. So I guess basically like most things, okay? And this obviously goes above and beyond even just the stuff that they're covering in this article, but we'll get to that here in a second. So they start off here in this first paragraph, and keep in mind, I mean, again, this is CBS News, so of course they have to sort of couch this in the language of like a Cold War standoff, and basically they're coming at this from the perspective of trying to be angry at the Pentagon because because, you know, this kind of waste, fraud, and abuse or price gouging from these private defense contractors, from these weapons manufacturers, is making it more difficult for us to gear up for war with China or Russia or whoever, you know, it may be at the end of the day. But they start off here. They say... With the U.S. supplying billions of dollars of munitions to Ukraine and growing tensions in the Taiwan Strait, some Pentagon generals are sounding alarms about the dwindling supply of U.S. weapons at a time when the cost of replacing them is skyrocketing. We wondered, why is the Pentagon finding it hard to procure weapons it needs at a price that taxpayers can afford? I mean, again, they don't really, <laughs> they don't really question the idea that, like, Maybe we don't need to be spending all of this money on all of these different weapons in preparation for potential World War III with China or Russia or aiding Ukraine, right? Maybe we could have questions about the fundamental thing that we're talking about here instead of just making this a question of, like, how are we going to get more weapons that the taxpayers can fund? But, okay, they continue. A six-month investigation by 60 Minutes found it has less to do with foreign entanglements than domestic ones. And what, can only, and what can only be described as price gouging by U.S. defense contractors. You don't say. So they got a quote here. They say, the gouging that takes place is unconscionable. It is unconscionable. They say, perhaps no one understands the problem better than this guy, Shay Assad, who is now retired after four decades of negotiating weapons deals. In the 1990s, he was the executive vice president and chief contract negotiator for defense giant Raytheon. So I guess this guy would probably know about price gouging in the military, right? They say then he switched sides under President George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump. Assad rose to be the Defense Department's most senior and awarded contract negotiator. Okay, I wouldn't really call that switching sides. I would kind of just call that like the revolving door of corruption within DC politics. I mean, this is the same thing as like, you know, what Joe Biden's defense secretary, Lloyd Austin, the head of the Pentagon, who previously also worked for Raytheon, got a million dollar payout as he was leaving this private corporation and then went to lead the military. I mean, it's, it's called corruption, right? It's not just like some innocent thing here where he switched teams and now he's on the side of the American people. I mean, I guess this guy is, is better than most of them who were involved in the DC, you know, uh, revolving door of corruption, because at least he's willing to call out straight up price gouging, but it's not exactly as they're portraying it here, but they say, the Pentagon, he told us, overpays for almost everything for radar and missiles and helicopters, planes, submarines, down to the nuts and bolts. And he says, this bill is an oil pressure, so he's giving an example here, it's an oil pressure switch that NASA used to buy. Well, their oil switch cost, with all of the cabling, cost $328. The oil switch that we paid for over $10,000 for it. $10,000, that's a markup of what? 100%, 1,000%, I don't know, can't do it off the top of my head. $328? to $10,000. That's the markup that we're talking about here. And again, there's no accountability because we just have an infinite slush fund for the US military. We just don't care that they're price gouging us to this extent, right? So they say, so what accounts for the huge difference? And he says, gouging, what? What else could account for it? Yeah, I mean, straight up, it's price gouging. And I mean, again, this isn't unique just to this one circumstance that we're referencing here with Raytheon and, you know, these specific missile parts. As he pointed out there, it's everything. It's across the board. This is what was happening, especially during the war on terror, during the Afghan war, during the Iraq war, okay, and every war before and after that since. But this is like something that was a major story in the early 2000s, okay, was the fact that a lot of these private contractors, a lot of these private corporations were fleecing the American taxpayers. 
taxpayer, okay? We've known about this for a long time. The fact that we haven't adjusted or, or actually added some degree of accountability, that's a choice, okay? It's not something that like, oh, whoops, we just found out about this or, oh, whoops, I guess we should maybe look into doing something. No, the choice to do it, to, to not look into this, to not actually do accountability on the Pentagon or on these private corporations, that is an active choice that we have been making for the entirety of post-World War II American history, okay? Remember Dwight D. Eisenhower warned about the influences of the military industrial complex. We have known about this for decades and decades and decades. The corruption is absolutely intentional. But just as a reminder here, again, the broad scope of this problem, they say here from responsible statecraft, the Pentagon fails its fifth audit in a row. Not one, not two, three, four, but five. Five audits in a row. They can't pass a goddamn audit to save their lives, okay? And I mean, think about this in the context of, uh, you know, the, the ongoing debt ceiling standoff that we're having right now, where Republicans are trying to cut things like food stamps, okay, SNAP benefits, right, and other programs as well that are supposed to go and help the most vulnerable, the, the poorest people on the bottom rung of the ladder within this country, okay? They want to cut those things while increasing the military budget. That's what we're talking about right now, okay? So we need to threaten to blow up the global economy in order to starve poor people, but for the Pentagon, for the US military, it's infinite money, whatever they want, no matter if we're getting price gouged, doesn't matter, okay? And I mean, keep in mind, this is the same Pentagon, all right, another part of what they uh, pointed out here, right? They only managed to account for 39% of its $3.5 trillion in assets. They can only account for less than a majority, okay? A minority of their assets, all right? They don't even know where anything is. Okay, and this was on top of another recent story that we just had over the last couple of days. I mean, the Pentagon getting kind of slammed here by uh, the media right now. But this was another one. And again, of course, this is framed in like a more, you know, warlike direction, a more hawkish direction with the way that the media is covering this. But they say here from the Hill, defense officials overestimated Ukraine aid delivery by $3 billion. The revelation means that there is more security assistance for Ukraine than previously believed. Okay, so again, this is how the media covers these things, right? It's good that they're talking about it at least, but, uh, you know, to inform people, but this is how they talk about it. It's like, oh, whoops, we, we, you know, looked under our mattress and found $3 billion laying around because of like a whoopsie accounting trick that we did. Okay, would they ever do this? for average working class Americans in any context whatsoever? No, not only are they not willing to do that and pull you know money out of their ass to fund things that actually uplift people on the bottom rung of the ladder, they're doing the exact opposite of that. They want to slash those programs, okay? And of course, this reminded me of that uh, you know a famous viral Jon Stewart clip that went out a couple of months ago at this point, back from April, where basically he's having a conversation here with the uh, Deputy Defense Secretary, Kathleen Hicks, on the uh, Pentagon's failure to pass one of those audits right out of the five that they've gotten a chance to in recent years so let's just go ahead and remind ourselves of uh, some of the best parts of this clip here real quick to be doing like there is a lot of waste fraud and abuse within a system audits and waste is. fraud and abuse are not the same thing so let's uh decompose then these please educate me on, on sure what so an the, audit the is exactly what you just described yes. which is do i know what was delivered to which place right the ability to pass an audit or in a, the fact that the dod has not passed an audit is not suggestive of waste fraud and abuse that is completely false right there okay i mean again Imagine any government official saying this about any other program, right? Imagine if Medicare or Social Security could not account for 60% of its revenue or 60% of its assets, okay? They would shut the department down overnight, all right? But apparently for the Pentagon, it's just, it's perfectly fine. And, uh, you know, we're too stupid to understand what's actually going on here, right? So... So what is now it's a question of it's suggestive that we can't we don't have an accurate inventory that we can pull up of what we have where. <laughs> that is not the same as saying we can't do that because waste, fraud and abuse has occurred. So in my world. Yeah. That's waste. How is that waste? If I give you a billion dollars and you can't tell me what happened to it. That to me is wasteful. That that means you well, are not <laughs> responsible. But if you can't tell me where it went, then what am I supposed to think? And when there has been reporting, I mean, this is not look, I'm not I'm not saying this is on you and that you caused this, but I think it's it's a tough argument to I'm make pretty sure that I didn't cause it. <laughs> an an eight hundred and fifty billion dollar budget to an organization that can't pass an audit and tell you where that money went like 
I think most people would consider that somewhere in the realm of waste, fraud, or abuse because they would wonder why that money isn't well accounted for. And especially when they see food insecurity on military bases and they see... You want to talk about that? Because that's a good... We should be talking... I mean, well, I'm trying to understand where, we're, where, where you're trying to go other than the dollars, which really well, bother you. <laughs> I think it doesn't really bother me. Oh my god, dude. I mean, just look at how, like, condescending she is to this basic concept that an agency that's getting nearly a trillion dollars a year, that maybe they should be able to tell us where exactly that money is going. But she just, like, scoffs at it. She laughs at it. She thinks it's a ridiculous conversation to even be having in the first place. I mean, credit to, uh, you know, Jon Stewart for keeping his cool in that kind of a situation. I probably would have been absolutely losing my mind. Um, but anyways, I mean, so, you know, again, this is not an issue that we haven't known about, okay? This is an issue that has been going on for decades in this country, right? And again, if you're wondering why haven't we done anything about this, why isn't there more increased accountability? Well, again, it's the influence of the military industrial complex. It's the fact that, you know, for a lot of these politicians, for numerous different reasons, one being, you know, uh, a lot of these, uh, you know, uh, states around the country have some of these weapons manufacturers within them. They have a lot of political influence. They have, you know, uh, jobs that people have. They have influence in that sense, but they also have more direct influence through like campaign contributions, right? And they also have, again, the revolving door of uh, politics within Washington, D.C., where you can go from working for a weapons manufacturer to going and working for the Pentagon and then going back to working for one of these private contractors. I mean, it's just like it is a endless circle jerk of corruption. Another aspect of this that I've talked about a bunch of different times on this channel is stuff like this. At least 15 lawmakers who shape U.S. defense policy have investments in military contractors. I mean, these are motherfuckers who are sitting on the Senate Armed Services Committee, okay? They have direct investments within these private, for-profit weapons manufacturers who are price gouging their own constituents. I mean, this is the this is the level of corruption that we are talking about within the United States. And all of this, keep in mind, is completely legal, okay? There is nothing illegal about this. This is how we have effectively legalized corruption and bribery within the United States of America, okay? You have the revolving door, you have a, a lot of these jobs where they feel somewhat political pressure. I mean, that's, I would put that in a different sphere than the other things, but you have the revolving door and they have all of these elite corrupt buddies with them that they don't want to piss off, that they want to continue being friends with in these circles, right? And then you have shit like direct campaign contributions, shit like them being able to somehow trade stocks the companies that they are making the defense policy for and then we have reports coming out like the one from uh 60 minutes right and other ones as well like the one from that uh the uh, uh pentagon failing its fifth audit one from uh responsible statecraft and we have articles that come out like this every once in a while and just nothing ever gets done about it right so i mean again when we talk about like slashing the pentagon budget right when we talk about like where should our money be invested okay maybe let's think about these kinds of things right maybe let's think about stories like this right, where companies like Raytheon that are multi-billion dollar companies that exist explicitly to profit off of the killing of men, women, and children around the world, all right, maybe when we're having a debt ceiling standoff and we're talking about how to rein in government spending and waste, fraud, and abuse that conservatives love to talk about all the time, maybe let's start with this. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me, everyone is saying...